To take truly great deer, time will pass by. You'll have to let great deer pass by, deer that will test your will and commitment. And sometimes, it takes years. But patience. Patience is what will produce a deer that catches your eye. Then it will be time to head out, set up, and set the stage for a hunt that may take days, weeks, months. And when opening day arrives, you'll still be tested, still have to put the time in, still have to pass box. But motivated by still knowing what's out there. Deer hunting is different for everyone. We all have our reasons why, why we get up and head out. For some, it's a tradition. For some, a hobby, a pastime, or a lifestyle, maybe an obsession, or just to be outdoors enjoying nature. And for many, it's generational. For us, it's a love of deer, watching them, historians curating the lives of giants, and the challenge of perfecting a craft. Regardless of the why, we all share one thing. We all hit in with a common hope, a common dream, that all of our reasons why, everything that we've done in the deer woods to this point, may put us in the path of a legend. giant stealth cam presents dean partridge's canadian whitetail brought to you by ozonics undetectable undeniable monster meal attraction nutrition results excalibur crossbow different for a reason heater bodysuit number one in cold weather hunting gear new archery products hunt with confidence Bog, engineered for the unknown. Hoyman, your land, your legacy. Muddy, serious gear for serious hunters. Glendell 3D targets, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the world. Nocturnal lighted knocks, switch on accuracy and let it glow. Hunter specialties, serious hunting tools. Boyd's hardwood gun stocks, better with Boyd's. Raculator. Score your trophy fast, easy, and accurate. Old timer knives, built for generations. And by Stealth Cam, proven reliability, proven quality, proven performance. Anyone that knows Steve knows he lives and breathes big whitetails. And they also know that his focus isn't just taking one, rather watching them grow and mature over the years, letting them grow into something truly remarkable. And when it comes to not worrying about whether you use your tag or not, well, Steve really walks the walk with 2017 being the last year that he drew his bow. Summer scouting showed the buck had absolutely blown up and we had gotten set up. And in October of that year, Steve's chance would come. And that moment had netted Steve one monster buck, the first that he had taken in a couple of years. The following year, this buck, Dougie, was the best that he would see, but not concerned with filling his tag, he let the deer walk. It was cool seeing him anyway. Very nice up and coming young deer. We'll pack up, we'll get out of here, and we'll call her a day. 2019 found Steve hunting one of the oldest bucks that we've ever known, Flaxy. His first encounter would come too late one evening, setting off a string of failed chances. The next time Steve would catch up with Flaxy, it was early. But as Steve prepared, Flaxy turned and walked straight away. The late season came, and as did another late encounter with the old buck. 
and a couple of days later he'd really be tested when this incredible young buck made an appearance. But sticking to his goals, he let the deer walk to mature. Then near season's end, our last encounter, and he was coming on a string. And just when we thought we had him, he turned again and walked away. And in all honesty, it didn't bother Steve one bit. 2020 was now here and Steve had a new focus and it was a buck that we'd watched grow for the last couple of years. In 2018, he had a tight curl, but exceptional beams and brow tines. And in 2019, he grew significantly. But that was nothing in comparison to what the deer would look like now in 2020. And after his first look, Steve knew that he had to make a plan to get in to have a closer look at the now colossal buck. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Glendell the only 3D target with a replaceable four-sided core. Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. This segment is brought to you by Hoyman and the new no-slip H-grip on their full line of tools. Best in class tools for every application. Hoyman, your land, your legacy. With 2020 upon us, we had a great deer on the stealth cam, a possible target buck for Steve. Long beams, tall tines, huge brows, this was the kind of deer that Steve was waiting for. So we loaded up to go get ready. We could never express enough how these days are some of the best, as good or better than the hunting days, the preparation, the time with friends, where the fall's plans are drawn out. Based on summer stealth cam photos and past history with the deer, Steve knew right where he wanted to be set up. And when getting ready, I always imagine the events that might happen at the spot come fall. The deer we might see, might not see, maybe the chance at the buck of a lifetime, or maybe a broken dream. All right, Dean and I are back at her again. We uh, got our blind popped up. Uh, we got some attraction out, we got a camera up. Um, this is kind of one of our favorite spots. Actually, it's really one of my real favorite spots because in 2015, I shot a colossal five by five here. He actually went Boone and Crockett. Uh, we got egg here to the north. We got egg here to the west. Um, nothing real special about the area. It's just a lot of bluffs and uh, the deer bed in the bluffs throughout the day. We sneak in and they make their way from bluff to bluff, working their way out to the egg. So, got everything going here, and we'll uh, come back in a couple weeks and see what's going on. After getting ready when we returned, Steve was correct on where to set up, as the big splits buck was moving through regularly and in good light in the days leading up to the season, even after he'd shed his velvet, and there was only one last thing for Steve to get ready. Opening day, that day we all wait for, that we prepare for, and Steve is headed in to try to get a look at the split spot.
this is day one for me in Saskatchewan uh, whitetail season. I slipped into uh, one of my favorite spots. The last couple of years there's been some uh, nice up and comers. Uh, one of them um, really jumped up this year and uh, we thought we'd better come in and have a look at him. Hopefully he makes an appearance and we can get a look at him and decide uh, whether we should continue after him or let him go for another year or so. After a summer of preparation, Steve has a bit of a disheartening day one, not seeing a deer until almost dark. Just a young buck, but still fun to watch. And though no sign of splits, when you play the long game like Steve does, you know that there's an entire season yet, even years, to make it happen. This segment is brought to you by AAE. Innovation and integrity is in our blood. Quality and dependability is in our products. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Bog. More than just a shooting rest. Bog, engineered for the unknown. We're back in the same blind again. <clears throat> um, extremely hot today for uh, for this date. It's uh, 29 degrees. So uh, up here, that's an extremely hot and unusual temperature. So. Twenty-nine degrees Celsius in the fall can really halt deer movement here, but early on, Steve has this young spike make an appearance. Like his first day though, oddly, Steve would only see a single deer. This is sit number three. Um, same blind, same spot. Wind's perfect for it. The crop is still up, so it's uh, actually quite noisy coming in here. And uh, I'm starting to wonder if it's uh, playing havoc with the deer. I've only... Uh, in the two sits that I've sat here, I've seen, well, two deer, one each night, but uh, that's it for deer, so. Um, tonight when I walked in, I seen uh, three deers go running off through the bush. It looked like does to me, but um, kind of hard to see when, say when there's only uh, tails you see going through the bush, but. Though tonight Steve seen more deer, movement was still slow, and we felt he was likely onto something, that walking in through the noisy flax to get to the bluff was alerting too many deer. Still haven't seen the buck that uh, that's uh, running around this neck of the woods. I've seen a couple small ones, but uh, he has yet to make an appearance. The camera is showing that he is still in the area, but he is showing up here in the later part of the evening, uh, kind of sort of right after uh, we leave. So that tells me he must be bedding at a at a further distance than what we kind of originally thought. One of the hardest parts to modifying plans is not knowing. Not knowing if Steve had bumped the buck walking in. If so, the spot is likely done and we need to make a change. Or is he still in the right spot and he just needs more time? Tonight, finally, at last light, some of the bucks are moving, including this wide up and comer.
He's followed shortly by another young buck, a narrow heavy nine point, but no signs of splits. And tonight, Steve would pull the memory card from the stealth cam on his way out. And when checking it, we see the bucks moving through almost only at night, and seldom. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate. Learn. Set up. Hunt. Brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Spring is in the air and many deer hunters are looking to hit the trails. We've talked about it before, but it always deserves mention, and that's shed hunting. It's a great physical activity that you can include the entire family in. It's rewarding and incredibly valuable. Yes, valuable. Shed hunting is one of the best ways to scout any given property. Walking the hills, the trails, gives you a deep understanding of the land, and all the false sign is usually still pretty fresh. It's also a great field judging lesson. You heard that right. Shed hunting helps your ability to judge bucks in the field by getting your hands on the actual antlers of gear that you had on trail camera in the fall. Like everyone, we get pictures on top of pictures of bucks each year. That only tells part of the story of the size of the deer. There are big bodied deer, small bodied deer, and their true antler size can sometimes be deceiving one way or another. We had pictures all year of this nice 5x5, five five, but it wasn't until we picked his antlers that we really understood how big he really was. Much nicer than what we were expecting compared to the trail camera photos that we had gotten, and even nicer than when we had spotted him pre-season out in the fields. There's a ton of upsides to shed hunting and nearly no downsides. The only caution I have each year is to be respectful of how hard the winter can be on the deer and to stick to the field and food sources in the winter to keep from pushing deer out of bedding areas until later in the spring, as to not put undue pressure on them. It's fun, free, and family friendly, and it will only increase your knowledge of the deer that call the Whitetail Woods home. This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Muddy Outdoors. Share your own muddy moment. Canadian Whitetail is also brought to you by Central Boiler Outdoor Furnaces, the ultimate wood heat, Black Eagle Arrows, advanced carbon technology, Block Archery Targets, the world's number one archery target, Tacticam, share your hunt, Wild Edge, the ultimate climbing system, Cyclops Lights, get out of the dark, and by Hawk and the new Hawk Down and Out Hybrid Blinds. This segment has been brought to you by the Heater Body Suit. The Heater Body Suit is the ultimate cold weather hunting garment that allows you to stay on stand longer and sit comfortably. The Heater Body Suit, you stay warm or your money back. Now already late October and no sightings of the splits buck. When conditions are poor for the spot, Steve had started sitting other stands to get a look at other bucks while we tried to figure out what to do about splits. It's October 20th. I'm at a blind that we call Rocky Road River Bottom. This is a spot where we're looking for a buck which we call Dougie. We've known about him for about five or six years now. And uh, we're hoping to have a look at this lad, so. A great deer, Steve passed in 2018. In 2019, we did not hunt the deer and he'd appeared to only grow a little bit that year. But now in 2020, he looked his best yet. It snowed last night, it's cooled off, it's a little breezy, so uh, we'll sit back and see how the night turns out for us. Here too, it seemed to be another long evening with no deer until at last light they noticed this small buck. The small buck nervously watching behind himself, Steve looks and there he is, the buck we call Dougie. A monster bodied mature buck with a big heavy 4x4 frame. But Steve elects to pass, knowing Splits is still out there. And he had made the exact right decision when he'd find out what I'd learnt about Splits that very same night. Dean pulled the card here the other day. He uh, found him over here. He's normally haunting a stand about a mile and a half to two miles away from here. Gonna try to get a look at him and see what he looks like. This segment is brought to you by Wild Edge, makers of the ultimate climbing system, the stepladder. Safely design your climb in any tree with the most versatile, lightweight, and compact climbing system, the stepladder. To book your own dream hunt in Northern Saskatchewan, 
please contact us at Canadian Whitetail Outfitters. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. To view all past and present episodes of Canadian Whitetail, as well as new original content, visit us on our YouTube and Carbon TV channels. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, visit CanadianWhitetailTV.com. Thank <laughs> you.